Hi there. On Monday, I put up a Facebook post with three sentences that I wanted you to look at and rewrite in terms of nominalizations and redrafting in general and think about the strong verbs you choose and what effect those strong verbs or verb forms might have on the client. On Wednesday, I posted another little video just with a few help, uh, with a few hints and uh, about how to approach this. So let's go through these sentences now and hopefully it'll begin to make a little bit more sense. The recommendation is evident. Preparations are made for the tax audit, which will take place immediately. So first of all, two nominalizations straight away, the recommendation and preparation. So you've got recommend and prepare. So when you recommend, as I just said there, someone recommends that somebody does something. So straight away, when we use the verb, we've got the subject and the object or at least certainly the subject. And it's the same with prepare as well. So we might say, for example, we recommend that you prepare for the imminent tax audit. Now, you might see that my rewrite uses a lot less words than the original. Well, that's because I've got rid of all of this language with the use of this one adjective. So vocabulary choice and vocabulary knowledge is very important in making a, sent making a message or communication succinct and clear. So we recommend that you prepare for the imminent tax audit, but let's look at prepare for a little bit. We might decide to suggest that there is an action that needs to take place now and that the client needs to do it now. So we might decide to use a different main verb. We might say start and then use a gerund afterwards to communicate urgency or action of some kind. So we recommend that you start preparing for the imminent tax audit. So do it now, begin the process now. Or we might see this as a form of obligation or as a warning. And in both cases, must as a main verb is okay. So we recommend you must prepare for the imminent tax audit. And inherent in that would be if you don't, there would be lots of trouble that you will face. So here, it's not just about verb form. We'll see, uh, we'll talk more about verb form in a second, but choice of main verb. So when you've got a nominalization, don't always take for granted that the main verb in the nominalization is the verb that you want. Maybe there is another main verb that you can choose which will communicate a, a different but more important message. Okay, so this sentence is a wonderful non-sentence. It looks fantastic, but in actual, in actual fact, I would tell you this is a hopeless sentence that really, really needs to be redrafted. Let's just have a look at the verbs. The case is under review by lead counsel and her response is awaited. Two verbs, is and is. What do, the, what do those verbs tell us? Absolutely nothing at all. Where is the main message? Well, they're not in nominalizations, but they are in nouns, and in one case, an adjective. So we've got review, this could be to review. We've got her response, this could be to respond. And awaited, which is the adjective, this could be a form of wait. So how could we bring this sentence to life and communicate a message to the client in a much easier to, under, easier to communicate way? We might say something like this. Lead counsel is reviewing the case and we are waiting for her to respond. So using the active voice makes it a lot easier to understand. Someone's doing something, someone's doing something. Lead counsel is reviewing the case. We are waiting for her to respond. So we've got the continuous form here. We've got the continuous form here and we've got an infinitive form here. Suddenly we're using three strong verbs to communicate the same message and this sentence has got a lot more impact and a lot more power and also it's the choice of the continuous forms which tells us that something's going on something's happening and that might be a good message for the client now it might not actually be the case uh, and in on wednesday i talked about a situation where you want to communicate a message to a client which perhaps is not quite reflected in reality but you know will happen soon and this is a perfect example so the clients on your back putting you under pressure wants to know what's going on and you say something is happening something is happening it's not really happening but you know it's going to happen soon so this is an example of how the message you you want to communicate is different to 
that of reality. Now, that, of course, is a judgment call. You have to decide what you think the best message for the client will be based on your client's needs. And if we have a look at the other options that we've got here, we can have a look at what other things you can say. So we could use the perfect form here. So Lead Council has reviewed the case, completed action, and we are waiting or must wait, or we can might use the uh, future symbol form. She will respond shortly. So we've got the use of the adverb here, which tells us something will happen quickly as well. Or we might decide to use the perfect continuous form. Uh, lead counsel has been reviewing the case. It started in the past. It's still going on. We are waiting or we must wait. So we've got three messages here which communicate slightly different things. But the important thing to notice is that has reviewed is the only option which talks about a completed activity. So here we've got choices. Do we want to tell the client it's happening? Do we want to know, tell the client it's completed? Do we want to tell the client it started a little while ago and we're on top of it, which is has been reviewing. So we've got three options to choose from here. And you can see in general by using by using strong verbs, we bring a sentence to life. Now, I know anecdotally, there would be lots of people studying law that think that this sentence is a fantastic sentence. But take it from me. This is a stinker. OK, just to finish off quickly, here's the third sentence. Our understanding is that the necessary documents will be uploaded to the virtual data room by necessary third parties. What we've got to work with here is a gerund and a future passive form. So if we were going to redraft this, we might say something like, we understand that third parties will upload the necessary documents to the VDR. So this is the same message as this only using much, much less words in a much easier way to understand. We've got our future form here, will upload. Now, we do have options with will upload, but it depends all now about time, when things happened, are happening, or will happen in the future. So this would be much closer to a material change if you choose one of these options, but one of these options might also be correct. So you might say, for example, we understand that third parties uploaded the necessary documents to the VDR. This is a fact. It happened uh, in it happened, it, given the context, probably in the recent past. We might say the perfect form. So it's a completed activity which is relevant to now. Or we might say that this process started a little while ago and is still un, is still going on, but has not yet finished. So this is what the three different verb forms uh, in this case tell us. But as I said, here the, the original stress is on the future. And so my correction is also on the future. So choosing one of these three options would definitely be considered, as I said, a material change and something that we've got to watch out for. Okie dokie, if you've got any questions at all about any of the things that I've discussed in this video, then please leave them in the comments below and I will get back to you. And I'll see you again next week with some more rewriting exercises.